How medicine is delivered to everyday people is changing fast. More and more people are taking more personal control with their treatment and health options and seeking care outside of traditional medical sources like hospitals and doctor's offices. Patients are becoming clients, partnering alongside healthcare professionals to collaboratively take part in their treatment goals and plans. It's up to us as medical professionals to adapt to this change and prepare patients and healthcare workers to work together safely and effectively. This starts with education. Educating both patients and providers on the treatment and health options available to them benefits everyone and protects your clients and community from harm. This educational series is designed for providers and patients alike to help both parties better understand the specifics of their treatments, along with the legal and operational structure on how to safely administer them. Together through education, we can embrace this positive change in the field of medicine and ensure more people live happy and healthy lives. I'm Jason Seitz, paramedic RN and director of education. Welcome to Guardian MD. Semaglutide is gaining popularity rapidly as a new effective medication for treatment of type 2 diabetes and an anti-obesity med for long-term weight loss. Developed by Novo Nordisk in 2012, its creation was an attempt to create a longer-acting alternative to liraglutide. Semaglutide is currently sold under the brand names of Ozempic, Wagovi, and Ribelsis. What makes semaglutide so effective in controlling blood sugar in patients suffering from type 2 diabetes is its unique mechanism of action. Known as a glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist, it increases the production of insulin in the body by mimicking an amino acid lawn peptide hormone called GLP-1. GLP-1 is normally made in the intestinal tract and when secreted performs two actions. It stimulates insulin release and it inhibits glucagon release. To understand the significance of this effect, we need a brief, simple review of insulin, glucose, glycogen, and glucagon's action in our body in regards to balancing our blood sugar. Glucose is sugar and is used in the essential cellular process of energy consumption. Put simply, without glucose, our cells could not function without an energy source. However, excess sugar can be damaging to our blood vessels and tissues over time. So our body regulates sugar using a negative feedback loop. When our blood sugar, or blood glucose, is high, the hormone insulin is secreted by the pancreas. Insulin targets the liver to convert glucose to glycogen, a safely stored glucose chain. It also encourages our cells to absorb glucose and use it. When our blood glucose is low, the pancreas will release the hormone glucagon, which targets the liver to turn that stored glycogen back to glucose for use. In type 2 diabetes, the body either does not release enough insulin or is resistant to insulin effects. This results in high blood sugar levels. Semaglutide, by mimicking GLP-1, can increase the release of insulin, assisting the body in bringing blood sugar levels back down to normal. Another effect of semaglutide that has interested many is its weight loss effects. First off, understand that when someone who struggles with high blood sugar is able to control it well, this can lead to loss of excess weight and a healthier body. However, another weight loss benefit is semaglutide's ability to decrease hunger. Since GLP-1 receptor agonists slow movement of food from the stomach into the small intestine, patients will feel full faster after eating, and that feeling will last longer. Curbing appetite will usually lead to less eating, which results in weight loss. If you think that you or your patient may be interested in using semaglutide for either diabetic control or weight loss for obesity, here is some information that you'll want to ensure you understand. First and foremost, ensure that you and your medical provider have proper physician oversight or collaboration. Outside of traditional medical practices like hospitals and doctor's offices, physician oversight or collaboration is likely required for a non-physician provider to practice. This means that a medical director should be reviewing and approving you or your medical provider's practice. Medical directors ensure that legally compliant, safe, and effective care is given and help non-physician providers navigate the ins and outs of non-physician practice. Due to semaglutide's effect on blood sugar and its ability to suppress appetite, a good faith exam should be performed by a qualified physician or licensed provider prior to a treatment plan. This can often be done remotely depending on your state laws. This will provide medical personnel to ensure you or your patient's unique history and medical situation is taken into account before starting treatment. 
and will allow them to review risks, side effects, adverse reactions, and contraindications for use. Finally, an approved compliant SOP should be followed in regards to treatment. This ensures safe administration and proper pre- and post-treatment education is conducted. If you or your provider need assistance in finding physician oversight, developing a compliant SOP, or want more education on semaglutide and other medications, Guardian MD is here to help with trained professionals and dozens of resources to share. Help us achieve our goal of increasing access to medicine through medical oversight so that every provider can have a practice. You can reach us in the attached link. Please remember to like, follow, comment, and share.